question is that this bill be now read a second time. I call the honourable member for Forrest. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I am very pleased to, to support this bill, the Veterans Affairs Legislation Amendment uh, Bill of 2018, because of the additional support it provides to veterans and their families. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, it was George Washington who said the willingness with which our young people are likely to serve in any war, no matter how justified, shall be directly proportional to how they perceive the veterans of earlier wars and how they were treated and appreciated by their nation. I see uh, this bill as a key part of uh, continuing um, the uh, respect for which we, in which we hold our veterans and uh, also those in the Defence Forces. Since the inception of Australia and following all the wars and conflicts we have fought in, Australia has developed a world-leading system of looking after those who have served this nation. The, this Veterans Affairs Legislation Bill further demonstrates our government's commitment and that that we have provided over the last five years. It continues on measures, uh, with measures that we introduced earlier this year in several previous bills, and all designed, all designed to improve outcomes um, for serving and uh, those who have returned, uh, Australian Defence Force members, veterans and their families. And it is, uh, all of these services are meant to ensure that essential services are available, services and supports are available to veterans um, uh, when they need it. And it's really important that veterans are able to access uh, the services and entitlements that they need when they need them. And that's what the measures in this bill um, are, are uh, streamlining and assisting with. And I have a very personal interest in returned service people and in veterans. Uh, my mother was a war widow and uh, my family, particularly my sisters and my mother, lived their lives um, with the result of having lost both a husband and a father. And uh, having seen so many people in my electorate and those um, in my years return from serving Australia overseas in its many conflicts, and having a mum who was directly, and my sisters who grew up without a father, I well understand what we as a nation ask and expect of those who serve in our Australian Defence Force services. I also understand very directly from my wonderful RSLs and those who work in uh, the veterans community in the southwest of Western Australia what they need and what they need from us as a parliament and us as a government and us as a community in understanding what it is that they and their families have often sacrificed in the work that they do for us in serving wherever we ask them to do so. And sometimes, as we know, veterans have difficulties when making an initial claim, and a lot of the streamlining that we've done is assisting them. And this bill uh, amends the relevant act to allow the Chief of Defence Force to actually make a claim uh, for liability on behalf of a current serving Defence Force member. While it may seem as to some as a small administrative change, it actually provides an alternative way the claim can be made. And to some, this is a very, very important, um, uh, a very important move. And uh, this process will have a significant impact as well in reducing the time it takes to have claims for liability actually accepted by DBA. And this is something that I've heard about repeatedly in my time as a member of parliament. And this actually makes a huge difference to veterans and their families, to their mental, physical and emotional health and well-being, that their claim is processed effectively, efficiently, and that their claim is actually respected, because that's one of the things that this government is determined, that the claims made certainly will be respected. And it eases that um, mental, physical and emotional burden on veterans and their families. Um, and a, just a simple example, if DVA accepts a knee injury at the time of the injury uh, via a claim uh, from the CDF, then could accept the osteoarthritis of the knee in the future. That will be much easier under the, uh, what we see in this bill. DVA will be able to use the additional claim data at the point of injury to better inform its decisions. In other words, 
streamlining it and understanding um, the actual nature and the progression of the claim. It's streamlining, streamlining and simplifying the claims process. Another change will enable the Military Rehab and Compensation Commission, the MRCC, to, to actually obtain information to determine the claim for compensation under the Safety Rehab and Compensation Claims Act. It sounds technical, but let me tell you, this is yet another change that de demonstrates our government's commitments to veterans' welfare and that it is their, their welfare is firmly at the centre of all the decisions we're making. And we've seen some wonderful decisions around mental health service provision. I'm very proud of those. Um, sometimes, though, uh, veterans, through no fault of their own, can be actually adversely affected when the information that's really needed and critical to their claims is actually not provided by third parties. Uh, these provisions will provide veterans and their families easier access to that information relevant to those claims. It will require Commonwealth, state or territory departments, authorities or any people or any those in current or former, former treatment providers or other parties to provide information on the request of the Commission, again to make it much more streamlined. And members in this place um, have, a, in my view, a, a duty to inform themselves about uh, what it is that we expect and what, it, what circumstances that our Defence Force members are working in, be it in Australia or overseas. And one of the major ways they can do that is to take part in what we all know here is the Australian Parliamentary Defence Force program. It has two components. Not only does it encourage and allow and facilitate members of parliament um, to actually take part in um, a, a number of Defence Force programs, it actually then is a reciprocal program where members of the Defence Force are encouraged to come into this place and work with members of parliament on all sides of the parliament to actually understand um, how um, the, the parliament works and the work of members of parliament in themselves in the same way that we get to walk in a sense, not in the same way, but to get a real insight into what they're doing, what their job requires. Um, it, it gives us direct information. And I've been um, on a number of these deployments and I get the best information from the people on the ground doing the job. And some of that I've been able to pass back to successive ministers and shadow ministers. Really important because, as nobody would be uh, surprised, our Defence Force members are very direct in their comments and very honest and open. And this actual program that was developed in around 2000-2001 actually gives them the opportunity to have direct access to members of parliament in their area of work on the ground, whether it's Afghanistan, whether it was Timor, whether it uh, was Operation Resolute or Operation Astute. So many of these actual um, deployments and operations, members of parliament have actually been on the ground with our Defence Force members. So when we actually look at matters to do with veterans and their families, it makes it far more real for members of parliament to understand not only what the Defence Force members have been through during their term of deployment or what they've done in their time in defence, but equally what we talk about when we meet our Defence Force members is what effect this is having and their deployment is having um, on their families. And I can remember when I was in Afghanistan in 2011, uh, some of the uh, members I met at the time, they were on their fifth deployment. And uh, I know that there are those who are spending extended times away. I know they understand very well what, exactly what it is that they're taking one on when they join Defence and some of the extended programs um, and operations that members are involved in now um, can be uh, involved nine months um, away from, uh, from their families and from Australia at any given time. And uh, uh, this in itself is something that we are very well aware of and need to be as members of parliament in understanding why measures that are invol uh, involved in this bill are so important. And uh, one of the last changes in this bill goes to administrative issues with the Department of Vets Affairs. And um, we've invested significant 
funding into DVA as a government. And we need DVA to work better for veterans and their families. We've amended relevant legislation to ensure that payments to veterans are streamlined as much as possible, uh, while ensuring at the same time that there are the appropriate levels of compliance that are expected um, of us in this place. This will affect income support clients and exempting of certain lump sum payments from the income test. And that will allow um, certain to, to uh, certainly exempt lump sum determinations made by DSS to apply to income support clients um, where this is consistent with DVA's um, legislation and policy. And uh, the practical effect this means that it will uh, have for, uh, changes for veterans. It's actually just a simple lessening of red tape and bureaucratic delays in the processing of their payments. And I can't think of anything better, perhaps, than the mental health support and services that our government has and will continue pro to provide in a life lifetime sense for veterans. Um, I quoted George Washington when I first started this speech and how a country and a great country like Australia looks after its veterans. I talked about the fact that we have really a world-leading system for this. In this, the centenary year of the end of the Great War in 1918, we should take great pride in the system of support for veterans we have in this country. From government support through DVA to organisations like the RSL, like Legacy, Soldier On, and so many other community-based organisations. The years have marched on since our first conflicts, and we've had often to look further at our government's response to the needs of veterans and their families. I'm very proud of how our government has done that, particularly uh, since coming to, into government in 2013. We've come a long way um, from the days of the Vietnam's vets, um, and how they were received when they came back to Australia and, in fact, how some of their resources were dealt with um, in uh, not getting to them when they needed to be. We are now dealing, though, with a much younger cohort of veterans from far more recent deployments who have very different needs. We need to continue um, to actually work in this space so that we're meeting the needs not only of our more mature age veterans but those who are uh, currently in need um, of a different form of assistance. And uh, I'm immensely proud, as I've met so many Defence Force uh, members, both uh, as part of the Defence Force program, those who've come into our parliament and those that I've met through RSLs and uh, in the community. But I am incredibly proud of what they do for our nation. But I also understand the great price and the sacrifice that is made by them, many of them, and their family, and the over 100,000 men and women of the Defence Forces who have lost their lives in the various conflicts. And I also understand very directly, through my own family, that uh, what the lifetime uh, of loss and what that means. And uh, I also really wanted to acknowledge legacy and the work that they have done over the years, uh, especially for members of uh, the families of Defence Forces uh, and my sisters. Um, this was really important to my family. And equally, um, the Red Cross and the Salvation Army have also provided much assistance in the earlier years. I think uh, in, in uh, reflecting on what George Washington had to say, I think if George was uh, alive now, we could look him in the eye with great pride in this country. And I see the measures in this bill adding to the services and supports uh, that we provide as a nation to um, the veterans that we respect so much. And in finishing, Mr Deputy Speaker, I wanted to thank every member, past, present and future, of the, our Australian Defence Forces for what they do for this nation and let them reassure them that they have the utmost respect of the members of this parliament.